Hello everybody, it is Deltre. We are back with some more Fire Emblem Awakening Lunatic Classic. Last time, we headed on towards Regna Verox to recruit the aid of the local Khan in taking on the new Risen Threat. And today, we are going to do just that. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Before we get into the comments for this part, though, I did want to sort of... Uh, before we get into the comments of this video, though, I, I just kind of wanted to touch base with a lot of the newer people that had recently subscribed, because I, there's a lot of you guys, so first of all, welcome. Uh, secondly, I thought it might make a little bit of sense to explain the usual upload schedule and whatnot, because I saw a few comments wondering, you know, how things really work, so just so everybody's on the same page. I generally have two playthroughs of two different games going on at the same time. Right now I'm playing this game, obviously, and I'm also playing Final Fantasy Tactics on the side. And I like to alternate days for each uh, for each playthrough, right? Mainly because these parts are a little bit longer than average. Uh, compared to other channels and whatnot anyways, right? So, in order to give people time to catch up, because not everybody's going to have an hour every single day, you know what I mean? I, I like to alternate the playthroughs. And I also like to respond to the comments as well, which I, it sort of means that I can't... I can't record a bunch of these in advance. So these are these are roughly recorded maybe a day before they go up at most just to give you guys an idea on that. But no, I didn't forget about this playthrough or anything. I just I alternate playthroughs basically. One day awakening, one day tactics, so on and so forth. And also this isn't like a full-time job for me or anything. I'm just kind of a guy with a microphone, so bear with me on that. I still want to get this game done before Three Houses comes out, though, because I'm definitely going to play that. You bet your ass I'm playing that crap. Oh, yeah. You already know. Anyhow, let's see what we have for comments today. Isadora Zimenez says, I don't expect to have nearly as much difficulties as we had on Lunatic Plus. 20 seconds later, Frederick is on the ground. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Let's see. We need something a little bit more positive here. Ah, 7 and 4. Deltre, I think we'll have an easier time on Lunatic than we did on Lunatic Plus. Frederick and Crumb dies immediately. Okay. Is there anybody? Any comment at all? Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Uh, this one's kind of cheating, I guess, because it's going to be two for one. Uh, but I did appreciate this comment as well. So we'll start with this one. Viety2002 says, As far as I know, the first Exalt sealed grave of thousands of years after Mars era. Echoes post-game spoiler alert. And then I can't... I mean, I'm not going to read the rest because it is, in fact, Echoes post-game spoilers. <laughs> I mean, shoot, he said as much, right? He said as much right there. And, uh, yeah, 100% is. But I wanted to point this one out as well because, one, it's a well-thought-out comment. And, two, uh, if I didn't see this comment, I wouldn't believe this next one that we're about to see. <laughs> so here we have one from Ranger Jack Walker, who was also talking about Marth not being the first exalt. Which, okay. <laughs> he says, just to spare you the endless confusion, the first exalt is not Marth. Okay, makes sense. The first Exalt is stated to have allied with the Divine Dragon. Alright. Wielded the Felt Shield and the Binding Shield. Uh. <laughs> slew what is implied in the art book to be an Earth Dragon. Uh. <laughs> established a kingdom in the same area as the Kingdom of Arcania. <laughs> You're jerking me, right? Had a Pegasus Nightwife who charmed enemies into joining her side and wielded a spear that resembled wings. But it's not Marth. Okay. <laughs> okay. Screw you, Fire Emblem. I've had about enough of your shit. You gotta be... <laughs> you're, you're pulling my leg, right? Because I... Okay, I guess maybe the game doesn't say that Marth is the first exalt, but... Can we at least agree that it's an easy mistake to make? Come on. He said, Has a spear that resembles wings. <laughs> Her personal weapon is the Wingspear! <laughs> Why? Oh, don't worry though, the game support seems to get that a bit confused, but canonically, the events of Shadow Dragon slash Mystery of the Emblem took place 2,000 years before Awakening. The events of the first Exalt's battle against, uh, that one guy took place 1,000 years before Awakening. You know, I already said it, against Grima. Whether we see them or not, I don't know, well, I guess we'll just have to see. But seriously, if <laughs> if not for that other comment, I would have thought this one right here was 100% sarcasm. You mean to tell me that <laughs> there were two? There were two exalts who had aligned with the Divine Dragon. Probably Tiki, because she's like the only one around, basically. Or Nagi, I guess. 
I don't think... Well, I guess we'll see her when we see her. But you mean to tell me that not only were there multiple exiles that allied with the Divine Dragon, had the Falchion and the Binding Shield, that part's kind of important. The Falchion, okay, but the Binding Shield, that was pretty much just Marth as far as I'm aware. Beat an Earth Dragon. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty familiar. Establish... <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. And last to comment, I'm sure that resonates with many of you. Zenith says, and this, my friends, is why I'll never touch Awakening on any difficulty higher than hard ever again. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> Fire Emblem was a mistake, but we are going to go on now to Chapter 3. And I really like Chapter 3, so I guess we can just get into it, I say. Ah, yes, we never finished up our story from last time, now did we? I know what they'd really have to talk about here, but I, I appreciate little moments like this. It just, it works so much better to show this sort of thing than to just say these guys are all friends, you know what I mean? It's more natural. Well, what do we have here? Huh? Hey, is that what I think it is? A boulder? <laughs> oh, it's a Pegasus, cool. What? It's a Pegasus, all right. I think it's hurt. Let's just have a look here. Why can't Lisa just heal him? Oh, down there. Yeah, whoa, down girl, easy. Pardon me. Captain, one moment. Oh, it's Sumia's Pegasus, of course. God damn it. <laughs> I like to imagine that Fred is a jerk and he's just tying her shoelaces together when she's not looking. <laughs> Why are you so clumsy, Sumia? Uh, Sumia, are you alright? Those boots of yours again? <laughs> is he gonna say that every single time? No, I mean, yes, I mean... <laughs> I love running jokes like that. Well, come no closer. This beast is crazed. Wait! It's okay, Captain. I can handle this. Shh, easy now, girl. I won't hurt you. I'd be more worried about yourself, Sumia. God damn! <laughs> Shh! Whoa! She's not talking. What are you doing, Sumia? How did she calm it so quickly? Wow. That's incredible, Sumia. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, it's it's nothing, really. I just have a way with animals, I guess. Good. I should say so. Well. You all go on ahead. I'll dress her wounds and catch up as soon as we're able. Hmm? We can make time to wait for you. No. Thank you, Captain, but I can manage. Every moment is precious when all of Elise is in danger. Thank you. Right then. Be safe, Sumia. Yes. As you command, sir. I don't know if we should necessarily leave her here by herself. Weren't there like a billion risen around a second ago? She does not have good defenses, I can tell you that much right now. We didn't get any supports, did we? Oh, no, we did not. All right, I mean, if we don't have any supports, let's just get into it. For chapter three, the warrior's realm. I do like this map, though. I think this is the first one that's actually pretty decent. <laughs> God damn it. Lisa's really entertaining, I have to say. Yeah, I don't know, though. I just feel like chapter 1 and 2 are a little bit boring. The prologue is perfectly fine. Chapter 1, though, I mean, eh, it's just right out of the 4. Chapter 2, a little bit log based. But this one, pretty good. Pretty good. Rebrick, I'm breathing. <laughs> Stand beside my horse, milady. She'll shelter you from the wind. Oh. So Frederick has a smile on his face. Why? Why? I hate the cold. I hate the cold. What's wrong with you, Fred? So this is the fortress. Right. Yes, the Long Fort. It stretches along the border of Elise and Regna Ferox. Ah. The Khans that rule the Ferox have grown quite wary of foreigners. Still, don't mistake a lack of hospitality for an open hostility. This simply calls for a bit of diplomacy. <sighs> Negotiation's not my strong suit, but I'll do my best. Remember, everyone, your actions here reflect back upon Elise. Frederick Ooh. just goes around handing out posters of a naked Grom. I, I can't believe. Where did he get those posters? I know he said he commissioned them, but like, why? And who? Trouble in the wind, my lord. The Feroxy guards are mobilizing. What? What? Why? Right. Who can say? But they look ready to let fly at a moment's notice. We best prepare for combat just to be safe. Perhaps we ought to pull our supplies and select which shepherds to deploy. Loath as I am to trust her, hey, you might offer some valuable insight in this. Will you just trust me already, man? I put my life on the line so many times. What is your beef, Frederick? <laughs> if I was going to kill you, I would have done it by now. Jeez. 
Indeed, she is our tactician after all. So, hey you, what do you suggest? I suggest that Vike get the hell out of my party. And yeah, I'm going to keep calling him Vike. I am. I do not care what the game says. His name is Vike to me, and that is that. <laughs> Seriously, I can't tell you how many comments that were just down there saying, Oh, don't really, how do you not notice? The game said his name is Vike. I, I, really, is that, is that the hill you want to die on? Is that really ruining your enjoyment of this somehow? If I call him Vike, honestly, should that bother you? Do you really think? Honestly, in your heart of hearts, that's something to be worked up about. Come on, man. <laughs> Nobody likes the pronunciation, police. Get out of here. Preparations menu unlocked. And with that, Vike is the hell out of my party. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and bring Muriel. I actually did forget to talk about Vike, though. Uh, he's not too bad. Not really, not all things considered. He can go into the hero class, which is really nice, because you can learn the soul skill. Which is very useful on a game like this because there's lots of enemies to kill and a lot of route maps as well. So the fact that Vike can go hero, get the soul ability, it basically means that he can keep himself topped off by himself without having to spend any time healing him up with like Lisa or other healers that you'll get later on in the game. Which can be really nice because you're not always going to have the time. And it might not always be safe for Lisa to go deep into the enemy's lines, right? Because Vike is very much a frontline fighter type character. Uh, he also can go warrior, but warriors are not very good in this game, unless they're the enemy, because they have they have the counter skill, right? Which is pretty trash, uh, <laughs> for a lot of reasons. It's trash for you, because it's not that good of an ability. But on the enemy side, it's just straight up bullshit, man. <laughs> I, I would recommend going hero, though, because soul is just that much better of an ability. The mere fact that it keeps you alive for free is just so nice. Of course, it's not 100% reliable or anything, but when it happens, it can certainly turn the tides in your favor. And as I recall, he actually grows pretty well, like basically every single character in this game, more or less. So yeah, he's not, he's not like bad or anything. I'm just not going to be using him most likely. I really don't think that it's a good idea to raise a whole bunch of these guys, like a whole bunch of your initial team, that is. Because experience is already pretty thin as is. Now, I'm talking about lunatic mode. I'm sure on, like, normal mode, you could raise everybody and be just fine. But on the higher difficulties, no. It's better to focus experience into a few units. I mean, use everybody, obviously, right? We've got eight slots, so hopefully all eight people can do something. But as far as trying to train all of them, you'd be better to raise, like, two or three, probably, and then fill in the rest of your team with people who join later. Because there's just not going to be enough experience to go around to get all of these characters to be good, basically. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about using Mirio for the long term, though. She seems like she's actually pretty decent. Way better than I thought she was, that's for sure. I can tell you right now, she's going to be good on this map, because we got Armor Knights and crap like that. Uh, Defense plus two, it looks like. So that's, that's not going to matter. We're going to fry that kid no matter what. And right here on this map is the first of what I like to call break the formation, man. So, you'll notice that this archer, this soldier, and this knight have somewhat overlapping ranges, right? So if we can kill some of these guys, it's going to let us pick apart the enemy much more easily. If you're not following along, don't worry. It'll make sense in practice, but we want to kill this archer first things first because... We can, and he's also probably the most obnoxious, because we can't retaliate on this guy safely. Whereas the soldier in the night, we can at least retaliate on properly. Uh, of course, there's this guy up here as well, but as you can see, he's offset to the point that nobody's in his range. Nobody at all is in his range, even right now. So that's good. Now, the reason I like this map is because it actually has a much better flow compared to Chapter 2. Again, we'll, we'll see more of that in a second, but this one has a very natural progression to it. It's very logical. It almost feels like a Fire Emblem map. I know, crazy, right? <laughs> uh, jokes aside, though, I, I do. I think this one is pretty fun. The only weird thing about this is that... Well, can we see it right now? Yeah, it's, it's Defeat the Commander. Now, maybe this doesn't seem so strange if this is the only Fire Emblem game you've ever played. But to the veterans of the series, I have a question for you. Doesn't this map look like a different kind of objective? Perhaps a seas map? Shouldn't it be a seas map? Am I just, am I crazy? Am I on something? I don't know. 
but it really feels like it should be. Just based on the way that it's set up. And if you've only played Awakening, I might, <laughs> I mean, maybe you have, and if that's the case, I should probably explain what Seas is, because it's not in the game. <laughs> Despite being in just about every game. In fact, it was the first objective type ever in any Fire Emblem, but basically Seas is take the point, if that makes sense. So there'll be like one place on the map that you have to get to in order to win. And you usually have to get to that place with your lord. So in this case, Krom would likely have to get where Raimi is standing. And then that would be a seize map. But there's there's no seize maps in this entire game, which sucks because those are usually like the best maps, in my opinion. I think this game is literally only defeat the boss or route, isn't it? Which... I will say that right now, the the objective variety in this game could have used some work, for sure. And I almost can't help but wonder if changing it wasn't a last minute change. By the way, watch out for this guy. He has a hammer. But yeah, I can't help but feel like maybe it was a last minute change to get rid of other objective types. Because there are maps in this game that certainly feel like they should be something else other than what they are. And this is definitely one of them. This, this feels like a seize through and through. Who goes there? Halt! Who goes there? It is I, Krom. <laughs> I've seen your picture. Oh god damn it, Fred! In the name of the House Elise, I seek audience with the cons. Halt! Not another step, my bold lad. I've lancers at the ready. Wait. Hold, milady. We are not your enemy. Hexalt Emerin herself sent us to discuss matters of mutual interest. What? My only interest is keeping you out of Regna Ferox, Brigan. <laughs> Brigan! Now see here! You think you're the first Elysians to try and cross our border? I have the authority to fell such imposters where they stand. What? How dare you! You are in the presence of Prince Krom, the Exalt's own blood. <laughs> ha, yes, indeed. And I'm the Queen of Valm. You do realize impersonating royalty is a capital offense, yes? Hmm, then perhaps we should settle this the Feroxy way. You claim to be the Prince of Elise. Then prove it on the battlefield. Aye, aye. Well, I mean, Frederick's gonna be doing the proving, most likely, but... <laughs> what else is new, right? Ugh, Emrin won't like this at all. Please, good lady, if you just listen. I've heard quite enough. Attack! God damn it, dude! Sumia. Better hold on tight, Captain. Could get bumpy. Uh, right. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just love that face of his right there. He's like, oh yeah, I would definitely hit that. Right. <laughs> you can see it in his eyes, dude. <laughs> I think Sabia just stole his heart. <laughs> How long do you think she took to practice that line, though? And that timing, too, on top of that. Because she's just hiding over there in the bushes. Okay, okay, Sabia, wait for it. Wait for it now! Oh, Captain, I'm so relieved I made it in time. Listen. That goes double for me, Sumia. That was quite the dramatic entrance there. Thanks, Captain. I was an ace at theater back in high school. What's high school? Never mind that. I'm just glad you're okay. And this. Is this the same ornery Pegasus we met on the road? <laughs> oh, she's a sweetheart, isn't she? Once you really get to know her. Good. Well, many thanks to you both. <laughs> I think the Pegasus is blushing. And I think we had all best focus on the situation at hand. I agree with Frederick. 100%. Krom, they're coming. <clears throat> all right, the Feroxy way it is. Let's do it. Let us do it. So this map, wait, huh? Oh, shut up, Sumia. Fila said Pegasi can fly far afield, but they're highly vulnerable to arrows. Don't worry, girl. I'll watch out for archers for both our own sakes. Yeah, basically, in case you're unfamiliar, you take triple damage from both, so what would normally be a 9 power weapon is instead a 27 power weapon if you're targeting a flyer. And that counts for both Pegasus and a, another flying class that we'll see later on, Wyverns. So they both take a hell of a lot of damage from arrows, you don't want to let that happen if you don't have to, but it's not going to happen. We're going to pair some Mia with Heyu because for whatever reason... For whatever reason, nobody has any speed at all, and uh, she can't double this armor knight without help. And we don't want to pair Krom just yet, because we're actually going to move him right here. No particular reason. 
But this just seemed like a good spot for Krom overall, really. And I also have to say that I really do enjoy the music on this map. It plays for a few maps, but it's, it's probably one of the rarer themes in the game, and I'm not entirely sure why. It's certainly one of the better ones. It's almost like they just ignored something so obvious right in plain sight, you know what I mean? What? Why would they not use this clearly superior soundtrack Forgive in more me. cases? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, honestly, but it is what it is. Overall, the soundtrack in this game is very good on the whole, so I can't really necessarily complain. Just because I personally find this track to be enjoyable doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best one or anything, but I always find some enjoyment out of that one, for sure. Uh, right, we also got Sumia. I don't want to forget about her. It would sure be embarrassing to forget about somebody two parts in a row. But Sumia is... she's really good. She's really, really good. At least on hard mode. She's probably one of the best units, period, on hard mode. I don't know how well she holds up on lunatic mode. And by the way, when I say stuff like best unit, I'm talking about just the main story. I'm not talking about online battles. I'm not talking about Apotheosis DLC or anything like that. I'm just talking about characters and how good they are at helping you beat the story, if that's not clear. And as far as beating the story goes, though, Samia is really, really good. She is your first flyer. She's very fast. Her only real weaknesses would be a low starting strength, and of course her defense isn't particularly great either, but if you're into like min maxing and things like that uh, for the main story, Frederick is a really, really good support partner for her because they cover each other's weaknesses very well. Samia gives Fred the speed he needs in order to keep doubling things, and she also has the flight utility so she can fly over really annoying terrain like deserts mountains, forests, things like that. And she can do that for free. Uh, and that's really good when you have a unit like Frederick in her back pocket because he's really good, but he doesn't deal well with uh, disadvantageous terrain. You know what I mean? So that's a really strong pairing if you're just worried about beating the game. Oh, is Trauma on a cliff for some reason? Why? What am I doing? <laughs> uh, naturally, though, Samia has very, very, very high speed growth. So she should be able to double from now until the end of time, basically, so long as you're leveling her up. I may or may not. I I don't know. I would kind of like to try and use Soli just because I never knew. And I feel like they would be competing for a lot of the same experience. So that's not really something I really want to deal with if I don't have to. But overall, Sumi is a very solid unit. Even if you're not going to train her, it's still worth it to just bring her along sometimes. Because, again, flying is just that good. It really is. It's just that good to be able to ignore terrain at your own. Of course, <laughs> she's certainly not the strongest right off the bat. I can say that much for sure. With Frederick, though, she can actually pump out some respectable damage, and she can double some things, but not a whole lot of things. Right from base. It's obviously preferable if she had... Oh, we actually dodged, I just realized. No. No. No! Why? <laughs> Why? Alright, real talk. So, normally I just blast through this map as fast as possible, but I'm probably killing everything here. I mean, I'm still going to do the same thing as I normally do. But I'm probably going to end up killing all the enemies because these level ups have been just so bad. Did anybody else see Solda get luck res with her growth rates? Anybody else at all? <laughs> hmm. It's almost like this game is bullshitting you, Deltre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it, hey you? Worried about the speed level ups? Yes. Yeah. I've been thinking about how you rode with Sumia earlier. Do our units always have to fight one on one? Really? Are you suggesting we pair up? That's an interesting thought. I thought we already covered this back in the prologue. What are you saying, hey you? I admit, it, I'd resemble a pincushion right now if it weren't for Sumia and her mount. Exactly. By pairing up, units could lend each other added offense and defense. It might also allow quicker soldiers to ferry slower units great distances. Yes. Yes, I'm sure of it. This opens up all sorts of strategic possibilities. We should try it whenever the opportunity presents itself. Don't get too excited now, hey you. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure why I waited this long to explain all that, but yeah, everything they said is true. It's 100% true. Very good strategy and all that. So I'm thinking, hey you, can blast this soldier. Muriel can come through, take Sumia away, so then she can double this knight, taking him out. And I gave Muriel the thunder, actually, because 
I feel like Muriel needs the extra strength just a little bit more. Or the extra magic, I suppose. Or the extra damage. You, you know what I mean. She needs the extra damage just a little bit more than Heyu does. They're, they're basically interchangeable at this point because Heyu has not really been playing him long, I have to say. It's uh, very concerning, to say the least. But I, I think we're going to put this plan into motion. Yeah, look at that. He's done for. I guess she could have done it without. But still, we want to kill this armor knight with, without any doubt. This guy has to die. Yeah, Muriel's making a strong case for herself. That early game magical damage is no joke, man. Plus the fact that she can chip in at two range is just so nice. It really is. It's a very big difference. Uh, not taking that counter like that, you know what I mean? And with Fred... I think we want to try to give this guy over to Krom. Oh, did I not? Oh, I didn't take Vike's... Oh, I didn't take the axe from Vike. I wanted to take his iron axe. Because of this knight up here. I would be taking a lot less damage had I done so. Well, I'll tell you what. We can go ahead and do that because Soli got the dodge. Yeah, ordinarily I would have used Lisa to heal for Soli. But I might be able to use her to instead drop off stall. I might not even need to drop stall, truth be told. I guess we're going to find out. But I do know that Virion can kill this guy for his first level up. Come on now. Watch Virion get the sweetest level up of all time. Was a thing of oh, it was a thing of beauty, my dear. Oh, on Virion. Okay, well, we knew he wasn't getting speed. Has anybody gotten speed? I know that Hey You got one point of speed. Uh, Lisa must have got speed because she got that really sweet level up. I guess I'll heal Hey You. I'm not, I'm not so sure she's actually going to be getting hit ever again for the rest of this map, but it couldn't hurt. I'll tell you what, we're going to work on this guy first, though, just in case I miss. With Krom. So we drop him really low, and then Krom can take him out. Yeah, that seems like a good plan to me. And we want Krom in the lead, because he has a little bit more movement. And this guy's going to drop a door key for us, which is going to let us move on to the next section of the map. And with Sully, we can drop off Kellum. I mean, uh, 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 no, I dropped the joke. God damn it. <laughs> right. A key. We can use it to open the fortress's doors. So, yeah, really, really strange fact about this game. There's actually no playable armor knights at all. I thought that was really strange because they start appearing as enemies right here, but you don't get any of your own. The only real way you can do it is by reclassing. I definitely didn't drop the joke. Why would you? Why would you say that? I'm a master of comedy. Yeah, we'll just heal up. I think that Virion should be perfectly fine to be the one to drop off stall. It makes no difference, really. And what we're trying to do right now is outrun this group that's coming in hot from behind. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, so Frederick is magically going to gain a bunch of stats right now. So that's really good for us. And Krom is going to hit the door. Yeah, that's, that's just about perfect. We need to get up in here. And if we can outrun these guys, and at the very least get up to this plateau before they catch up, we can choke them off from here. Which would be ideal. Now, of course, we could just finish the map, because if Fred gets his hands on this hammer, he can destroy Raimi from base. Even without having gained the speed a single time, he still doubles, so it's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. So Fred can take a route. Usually, I mean, he might miss, he might need a little bit of help, but once she dies, the map is over, no matter what. No matter how many enemies are alive, it doesn't matter at all. That said... Let's see, do I have anything that... I only have really the silver and the... If I use the bronze sword... Okay, hey, you, you, you can you can double this guy with Sully, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so bronze sword it is. That, that's not ideal. We're taking a little bit extra damage on Fred. If I would have had the Iron Axe, this guy would actually only be dealing four damage to me. Because he would be losing three points from the weapon rank, I do believe. He, he would either be losing two or three. He'd be doing a lot less, though, I can say that. Yeah, he would be doing four because he would be losing two from his weapon rank, and then he's also getting weapon triangle because I have to use the sword. I don't want to break the Silver Lance just yet if I don't have to. Which is why I just figure take the damage. Now, unless Heyu misses this 93, we should be in a very good spot. 
And if Sully had gotten hit earlier on, I could have healed her, and I could have also taken the Boulderary that Frederick has in his back pocket. Finally! Oh my god, somebody did it! Somebody actually did it! Jesus Christ! Okay, sweet. We need so much more of that, though. <laughs> Ideally, she would have just had 9 speed straight up by this point. Now, of course, that's kind of hard if you're not using a speed boon at the beginning of the game, but if she would have had 9 speed, she could have straight up doubled Armor Knights with no pair up, which is obviously the better outcome here. Uh, Virion actually got HP there, so we can use that to get some experience on Lisa, at least. Yeah, seems good to me. And hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about with this map and it having a sort of a flow to it. Because everything that we're doing just feels, it feels very natural, right? Everybody is, I mean, yeah, sure, we're all going the same direction, but that's more a consequence of lunatic mode rather than the map itself. Because if this were hard mode, right, one group could go right, one group could go left, and then it would be this whole thing. Uh, we can't really do that here, obviously, because we don't have enough units that can handle this many enemies. Which is why we want to try and push up here, if we're going to try to take them out at all. But, unlike the previous few maps, this feels a lot more like your traditional Fire Emblem map, I want to say. And I think that's a pretty good thing, honestly. And truth be told, I found that a lot of the maps in this game sort of have this sort of style to them. Once you're more familiar with the game. Oh, you're done! You're done, kid! Oh, he lives on one! Oh! Oh, man. How did that happen? That was weird how I suddenly got a second attack for no reason. On the other hand, Sumia could probably kill him. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily wise, though. In theory, with Krom, she can double these guys. That's, see, that's what I'm talking about. She's pretty fast. She's pretty fast. So she can actually double some of these lunatic enemies, which is pretty impressive. We absolutely don't want to be in range of this guy. That's why I put Fred right here, because he's blocking this guy's best angles of attack. It sort of creates this small little pocket right here, where only the mercenary can reach. And one mercenary is no big issue. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying at the start of the map, right? Break the formation. This formation is totally crumbled by putting Fred right here, because I can now separate this guy from this archer, who otherwise would have had basically overlapping range. If Sumia were right here, she can for sure run up on one of the archers because they have to be within her movement distance in order to attack Frederick right here. So what we are going to do, we'll move here and switch back to Sully with the Iron Lads. We'll pair Sumia with Stahl and move Sumia next to Sully. Oh, I should have healed he yeah, I should have healed Heyu first. That's on me. But we will have Sumia right here. With stall, so that's gonna. It might look like this guy can actually kill her, but he can't. He's losing three attack power from weapon triangle disadvantage. Again, that weapon rank bonus thing, man. That's it's really, really important. That which is why I'm so surprised that the game doesn't actually call any attention to it at all. Because taking three less damage is no joke, especially at this point in the game. She doesn't actually need this pair up to survive. That's how huge it is. I, I basically want her to have a little bit extra HP. So that that way she can, in theory, take not only this mercenary, but potentially take a hit from this guy as well if I need her to. Or that's my theory anyways. I guess we'll see if that plays out. Now, Muriel and Virion can bring up the rear. Yeah, and we gotta get Krom, like, out of the way. Slightly out of the way. At least he needs to come in. I should have healed Hey You first, though, like I said. That would have been way smarter. He's actually gonna go for Sully, so I guess we do get to preserve the HP no matter what. And like I said, there were plenty of opportunities to heal up Sully if I had needed to before this point. So that dodge didn't really matter. Oh, we take those, make no mistake. We definitely take those, but it wouldn't have really impacted how this plays out, basically. Now, what would be really sweet is if Frederick wanted to get a ghost hit on this other archer. Or like, either, either of these archers, basically. It would be pretty cool to kill one of them right here. If not, I think we should still be okay, though. We'll have to think about it a little bit harder, though. Ooh, block. Nope, no, no, uh, no dual attack. But that's fine. That's A-OK. -okay. Let's put a little bit of brain power into this, though. Let's not throw... We have to kill this hammer guy. And I don't really want to get backed into this corner, though, either. And here's the problem with nobody getting any speed. So, like, if... If Frederick had gotten a decent amount of speed... Uh, two points to be exact. 
He could have outright been doubling these archers with the javelin, which would have meant, which would mean they were just straight up dead right now. At which point, this would be a very easy matter to finish the rest of this. But because nobody's been getting any goddamn speed, <laughs> uh, we have to improvise a little bit, I guess. Okay, well I'll tell you what. I mean, we kind of have to. I, I can't, I can't do too much about this. Yeah. Man, if I would have gotten better level ups early on. But I will say this: it's not as if. It's not really as if getting less than ideal level up somehow screws you out of beating the game or anything. It does change what you can and can't do, though. Uh, ever so slightly. For example, again, if Frederick would have been able to double those dang old archers, this would have been a much easier matter, don't you think? But that's fine. That's fine. We take what we can get, man. We definitely do. I, I guess I'm killing these archers. It, it, it kind of sucks, though, because that means less experience on Sumia. In fact, she's gotten zero experience now because I can't I can't move in with her, which, which just sucks, man. It does. But that's okay. We can easily easily kill the rest of these guys. Two archers gonna die right now. The hammer guy we can easily take out. And as long as we can kill the one soldier, we can then proceed to block the staircase as they're trying to come up from the south. Which works just fine. So maybe Frederick can try to get a level up, and maybe, just maybe. Hit his 50% speed growth. I don't know. Do you guys think it's possible? I ooh. <laughs> I cannot believe how bad everybody is. Like if it were just one or two characters getting a little bit screwed, okay, fine. But it's literally everybody. Well, this will be actually kind of a trick, huh? Because this guy is really hard to kill. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about this? Okay, so we pair Muriel with Lisa. No healing this round, but. It kind of has to be this, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. So we'll start with this. Yeah. Yeah, this this makes sense. This will work out, unless we miss. We don't. Not so far, anyways. Uh, Freddy. Well, I mean, I mean, we've already started. We're kind of committed. We're kind of committed, so let's just hope that I've done this correctly. So we do a billion to you. Take no kind of damage in return. That's Big Fred you're talking to. Uh, Virion cannot move here. Shoot on this guy. Like so. Nice. And at this point, because Lisa and Hey You actually had their support up to level C, when we transfer on over, we're actually going to be getting more, uh, more of a boost than Muriel was, putting up up to 13 exactly, which is exactly what we need. Uh, because if this guy does not die, we're very dead. So the hammer guy goes down. Not too bad. Now we gotta we gotta be really careful with these last few. Yeah, I mean I think this is this is honestly my best way out of this. Oh, that's a very unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. I, I really don't like relying on stuff like that, but I don't see another way. I don't see another way. Because Subia still has full health though, she can survive this scenario just fine. Hey, you can survive. This guy can no longer reach Virion, which is what I was so fearful of. But I don't have a better way to deal with this last guy. I don't. It's gotta be Krom, because if Krom kills this guy, then Stull can move in, take Kellum, and then he won't die to any combination of attacks, because this guy can't, like, the mercenary can't reach this spot, unless the archer moves, but if the archer moves, then he also can't attack Stull, so there's no possible way throughout all of this that Stahl will die whereas if I have Krom out there he'll only have 12 defense 24 damage times well 12 damage times 2 gives us 24 is one dead Krom whereas Stahl will survive because he has weapon triangle taking away that 3 extra damage from this guy and he also just has more defense naturally and more HP so it's gotta be this. It's gotta be, right? Unless the archer doesn't move. Uh, no, I'm, I can't... It, it's a risk no matter what we do. Either we're risking the fact that the archer will move for the mercenary to finish me off, or we're risking the 68. Which, in fairness, in fairness, this game has true hit, which means that hit rates are kind of skewed 
uh, in a certain way, like high hit rates are higher and low hit rates are lower. So a 68 is actually much closer to like a 78-ish, like a 78 to 80-ish percent, I want to say. There's, there's like a chart if you want to look it up, just search Fire Emblem True Hit if you're curious. <laughs> if you're curious to see exactly how lucky I am, that's something you can do. But just know that 68 is actually considerably higher than that. In practice. With that though, now we're good. Now we're good. That obviously could have been cleaned up a little bit, I won't lie. I definitely won't. But we pulled through. We pulled through. And that's all that matters. <laughs> a win is a win, man. Oh, god damn it. That's right, of course, because Sully was giving me speed. <laughs> I'm sorry, a what is a what now, Del Trey? <laughs> ah! God damn it, you! I put so much thought into those moves, too. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's what I get. Oh, finally, somebody gets it. Jesus. Okay, sweet. I have to win this time, don't I? I really do. I can't lose now. Now when things are finally going decently, can you believe it's taken this long to get anywhere with these clowns? <laughs> this is seriously unheard of, man. Hey you, hey you. Oh, where is your speed? <laughs> she just has no speed. There's like, there's a single speed we can like in the entire game, pretty much. So, uh, this is not a very good look at all. Not even close. I can't believe how bad she is. I don't care how strong you are if you can't double. You know, I will say I'm kind of glad that they got rid of the whole enemy pace music in the next few games. It just kind of breaks up the pace a little bit in my opinion. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, but I, I think I genuinely prefer to have one consistent theme for the whole map. Ha! Wow! <laughs> oh man, destroyed. That's not what I was expecting, that's for sure. Uh, that said... Yeah, that's looking good. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, that wasn't too bad at all. Not really. Uh, we just heal back Fred. And I guess, out of necessity, we are going to be killing these guys. I, I don't see another way, really. Well, I mean, we have the hammer now from that guy that we just killed, right? And since Sully- actually, Sully might get doubled? No, she doesn't. What am I saying? What am I saying? I'm- I'm full of crap. I'm just so paranoid after that first run, man. That first one was so bad that I just assumed that I'm throwing at all times. But no, Sully got speed. Of course, of course. Uh... Now, it should be really easy from here on in, right? Because we can just- I mean, we can do whatever we want, really. Yeah, I don't see... I, I, I don't see where the threat is at this point, basically. Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. So I'm actually going to throw a javelin at this guy. And then the rest of my team, whose name is not Frederick, is basically going to... Uh, where's the... Uh, ah, of course, Sully has it. So I have to give that to Frederick at some point. But everybody else is basically going to chill around this area and destroy these enemies as they tank on stall, basically. They can't really do too much to him. Although, to be honest, I would much rather Sully get in there. Cause she's just way better. And if anybody was going to get experience, it would be her. Although, truthfully, out of any possible character... Sumia, right? But she probably dies. 10 defense... Ah, she actually lives if Kellum was paired up with her. And she was on full, so maybe we do that. Yeah, so we can give this one to Heyu because she is still trash. She is so bad. She's so freaking bad. She can't even double armor knights, dude. That is so disappointing. You guys don't understand how obnoxious that is. Maybe you do, but this is... It's unheard of. It really is. Uh, we'll just attack you like so. Get kill on Archer, boy. Heal up with the vulnerary, because we're going to need that. And I, I am. I'm going to put Sumia in the choke. It just seems like the best thing I can do here. We do not die to you, so I'm actually going to trade the hammer like so. Take that bronze sword, I guess. We don't need that at this point. Come on now. Map over, man. Map over. So Stahl takes a melee, but that's okay. 
And since that armor knight actually foolishly decided to come right to me, I can kill the guy who's the biggest threat to Sabia right now. Ha ha. I say biggest threat. It's not as if he's like really that scary. I mean, look at that. Muriel's better than you. Muriel's way better. What's happening? Let's just drop the hammer on him, honestly. I, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Get speed, dude! I hate this game. I hate this game. I hate it. <laughs> He's gonna be unkillable, though. Like, look at that. He has 17 straight and 17 defense. He just hasn't gotten speed a single time. Uh, I don't know how we're adapting to that, really. I don't know. Can we adapt to that? It doesn't seem like something that you should be able to uh, adjust to. Well, at any rate, we're going to put Sumia at the point for sure. Oh, but yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, Muriel. Yeah, Muriel chips. Maybe even Hey You finishes? No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> there, you know what? I'm using Muriel. To hell with Hey You. Muriel it is. Because she actually has more speed now. <laughs> That's not even a joke. Uh, the level 2 Muriel outspeeds Hey You. Well, that's just precious. You know, actually, the annoying part about this is nothing. What am I saying? I can just move Krom in and have him get the kill. Yeah. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Where's my brain? Rapier hype! Level up hype! <gasps> he did it! <laughs> he did it! Yes, now he doubles Armor Knights by himself. I don't know why I'm legitimately excited about that, but here we are. Uh, yeah. Sumia out at front. I mean, that's not really the best spot, obviously, but I can't let Krom die. That would be no good. I'm just, I am I am. I'm just going to kill those guys. My level ups have not been kind enough that I feel like I want to go balls to the wall. It's just a really bad idea, truthfully. Oh, my God. Is my luck finally turning around? <laughs> finally. And by the way, you can kill, you can kill uh, R Rimey here. At just about any time, like I say, uh, once you get the hammer, she's as good as dead. So, there's always that. How am I giving this to Archer Boy? I mean, I should be giving it to Heyu because she's so garbage. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually feel like I have to. I genuinely feel like I have to give this to Robin because she is so bad. So, uh, we'll go with Virion because there's a good chance that Krom comes in. He doesn't, but it could have happened. Muriel. Watch this Sumia dual strike right here. You already know it's gonna happen. What? Wow! You mean I might actually get to do something as planned? Crazy! Madness! Level up your speed! It's not like it matters at this point. She still can't get to 9, which would be the magic number. I've had it. This is such a bad game. <laughs> She's got one point of speed. Over six levels. One point. Oh, I just realized they don't have any more vulneraries. I, I mean, I'm I'm speechless, guy. I I really am. I'm actually at a loss of words. This is unheard of. And very frustrating. God damn it. <laughs> uh, we're not getting any strength there. But if I did this, we would be. So there we go. Kill this guy with Archer Boy, who has gotten better love loves than Hey You. I just want to throw that out there. Virion has definitely leveled up much better. Much better. And I thought he was the bad unit. You guys told me that he was the bad one. Did I misspeak? Is it actually, hey, you who's the worst unit in the game? It, it's starting to look like that. It really, honest to God, is. No lie. No lie. Lise has gotten more speed. Yeah, this is, this is actually just too much for me. Go ahead and get me out of here. Get me out of here, Frederick. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I'm gonna have an aneurysm. I'm about to have a stroke, yo. This is too much. <laughs> Let our battle sound out the truth of your words. There's one speed wing in this game. Right? I really don't know what I'm gonna do. Robin is... I mean, hey, you is, like, really important, though. She's actually incredibly important. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I really am. I think I'm honestly going to replace her with Muriel. That's about where I'm at, man. I never thought I would see the day, but... Oh, Lord. 
then your claims were true. That's what I said at the start! I'm so mad. I even took the extra time to kill those enemies that I didn't have to. And this is how you repay me! No lie, guys, I... <laughs> I literally did a Google search before starting this part of the playthrough because I was so concerned about the speed and I thought maybe there was like some kind of copyright protection or something that I'm somehow triggering. Like some sadistic developer automatically put in 0% gross if they thought you weren't playing a legit copy for some reason. And I looked it up and I, the whole time I was thinking to myself, hmm, this seems like this could be a possibility. It wasn't. There is no such thing. In case anybody was thinking the same thing, like maybe my game was glitched or something. Nope, 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 nope. This is just my luck, apparently. I cannot believe that she has gotten six levels, one point of speed. One. One! A thousand apologies, Prince Krom. I saw those levels. <sniffs> truly a shame. I truly took you for brigand imposters. But no frauds could ever wage a battle just as you have. I will send a word of your arrival to the capital and escort you there personally. Good. That would be most appreciated. Thank you. That's not going to save me. I'm trying to think really, really hard about what I can do. Because I, I just don't know, guys. I really don't. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's, that's definitely not what AU sounds like. Amazing. Her whole demeanor changed. Right. In Ferox, strength speaks louder than words. I should have known better than to overestimate the value of diplomacy here. Right. So, can we get going, Krom? Hmm. Yes, it's not getting any warmer. Yeah, these are the only things getting going around here. Not my goddamn growth rate! Well, that said, we're gonna call it right here because I need to... I need to distance myself from this game for a little bit. <laughs> uh, next time we'll probably go a little bit longer. Oh, what what are you selling, Anna? Yeah, this is something that can happen, by the way. Oh, Draco Shield, but no dang old. No, 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 I'm buying this right now. I, I feel the need to buy this. These are random. Now, Anna can show up on any place that you've already completed. Uh, on any chapter that you've already completed, basically. And... Uh, the items that she sells are actually determined by the location where she spawns. So because she spawned right here, she has the Draco shield. Uh, if she spawned at a different location, she would have something else. But I deserve this, so uh, <laughs> so I'm going to pick up that Draco shield because I deserve something today. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to buy the hammer because uh, we, we can now shop everywhere, basically. As you can see, the shops have now opened up officially. And with it comes things like forging and crap, which uh, we can talk about a little bit more next time. <laughs> I guess we're ending this on a happier note than I thought. But that said, thank you all for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like rating. Helps me out tremendously. Let me know your thoughts as well. And I will catch you guys on the next one. We're, we're probably going to go for two maps next time. Because the first one is generally pretty short and simple. And we got to get Donnie Boy as far as I'm concerned. So... I will see you guys then. Later. Peace.